in this video, we're going to go over reverse engineering and functional analysis. So you've already uh, started the reverse engineering process on your Automo blocks. You've done your elements and your principles of design. Now it's time to think about the functional analysis. How exactly does it function? All right, but let's first talk about what is reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is the process of taking something apart and analyzing its workings in detail, usually with the intention of understanding its structure, function, and operation. Alright, so why exactly do we use reverse engineering? All right, well, there's documentation, there's discovery, there's investigation, and product improvement. So with documentation, maybe there's no existing documentation. You're wanting to know how it operates internally. Um, and then maybe you're needing to do some maintenance on it. A lot of items were hand sketched, things that were invented a long time ago. Uh, you don't have inventor or some type of a CAD. Uh, you didn't have that back then. You just had sketches. So now maybe you're wanting to print something on a 3D printer. You're needing to make it an inventor or CAD or some type of 3D uh, CAD program. All right. So discovery, academic, research and learning, curiosity, how exactly does something work? All right. Or military or commercial intelligence. Right, just discovery, trying to understand things. There's the investigation, analysis and testing, document patent infringement, um, or forensics. Maybe there's a design failure and you're trying to figure out how that could be improved or um, I guess who was in the wrong with this design failure. All right. Uh, if you uh, also to improve or redesign a product because maybe you're wanting to increase your efficiency, improve your reliability, improve manufacturing techniques, eliminate failure mode, uh, reduce cost, increase ease of use, reduce negative environmental impacts, recycle parts, etc. It goes on and on why we would need to uh, improve a product. So here's some examples of some tools that you'll use. You need, if you're trying to reverse engineer, you're wanting an accurate measurement. All right, so you might use a micrometer, a dial caliper you've already used um, earlier in this course. The optical probe, that'd be pretty cool because it actually, it's very expensive, but uh, it runs this, uh, I guess, ball over each item and then it builds an inventor for you. But again, that's very expensive. All right, medical imaging, interactive visualization. All right, so the stages of reverse engineering, you've got your visual analysis, which you've already learned how to do, your functional analysis, which you're learning in this PowerPoint, and then the next one you're going to do is structural analysis. All right, so functional analysis, after a product has been selected, a non-destructive functional analysis is performed. So this is what you kind of figure out how it functions before you completely take it apart. All right, so first you've got to figure out the product's purpose. Next, you're going to make observations to determine how the product functions. These observations are going to be recorded in detail. All right, lastly, the system's inputs and outputs are going to be listed. All right, so first we'll talk, talk about the purpose. The purpose of a toothbrush is to clean teeth and gums to prevent tooth and gum decay. Water and a cleansing paste are used in conjunction with the brush. All right, so that's the purpose of the toothbrush. Now the function of the toothbrush. All right, an annotated sketch with all visible components are labeled. Um, where they're all labeled is created. So notice how they sketched it out. So in your engineering notebook, you're going to sketch your item out. In this case, the assignment is going to be doing uh, the automo blocks that your group has already chose. Uh, you're going to sketch it and then you're going to label everything uh, and you're going to name it whatever you think the name is. So if you don't know something its name, uh, you're going to try to do an educated guess, Google it. If you can't figure it out, then you're going to uh, give it kind of an appropriate name. Okay. Then there's a hypothesis is devised to describe in detail the sequential operation or function of the device using the sketch as a reference. All right, so whenever you're explaining how 
it functions, you're going to talk about uh, the bristles, you're going to talk about uh, the electricity, everything that you labeled, you need to kind of talk about what its function is and what it does. And, and actually with those labels then you can talk about its function. Alright, then the next step you're going to do is what's called a black box systems model. All right, a black box, uh, black box systems model is used to identify what goes into and out of the product in order to make it work as a system. All right, so we have our inputs, what the function is, and then what comes out. Okay, so um, it says the black box is used to represent the product's initial components or process, which are deemed unknown at this point. Here's the toothbrush. You input, uh, you have to use hand motions to move it around um, in your mouth to get the back of your teeth, the front, you know, the gums, the, well, I guess not the gums, but uh, your tongue, okay. Uh, you've got to put toothpaste on it to make it work. You've got to add water and you got to add energy, energy from your body or in this case, this particular one has a battery. So that is everything that's going to be put into this toothbrush to make it work. Right? The toothbrush does not work as well if you're missing one of these items. Okay, so then the product function is going to happen. All right, these things are going to happen. Uh, and then the output, you're going to have sound. You're going to have heat because there was friction. You'll have waste. And then also a result, the output is you'll have clean teeth and gums. Right? So this is inputs and outputs. All right, and there's also going to be an example available for you on Blackboard and also on the R drive that's going to have a stapler and everything written up for the stapler. So you might want to read over that to uh, kind of get an idea of what they're expecting in this functional analysis. Okay, so read over that example and then go ahead and do your own functional analysis on the automoblocks that you and your partner uh, chose.